You know and I know everything happens in South Florida. And in the 1970s and 80s, the Hollywood Sportatorium was where it was happening. I'm Wayne Rooston with another chapter of South Florida's dubious history. Long before there was a AAA or a BB&T or even the Miami Arena, there was the Hollywood Sportatorium. It was built in 1969 by developer Stephen Calder of Calder Racecourse and Galt Ocean Mile fame and promoter Norman Johnson, who created the Miami Pop Music Festival and co-owned the Miami Hollywood Motorsports Park. It occupied nearly 240 acres of land in the middle of nowhere. West Hollywood Boulevard was only two lanes back then, which created monumental traffic jams. The Sportatorium was the only venue for big entertainment events, ranging from heavyweight boxing and wrestling to rodeos and motorcycle racing. The Sportatorium was designed to be home to a professional hockey or basketball team. In fact, there were four different attempts to bring a team to South Florida. This is the jersey of the first franchise attempt, the Miami Screaming Eagles, autographed by Bernie Parra, the Philadelphia Flyers Hall of Fame goaltender that the WHA tried to lure from the NHL to legitimize the league. Unfortunately, the Screaming Eagles never got off the ground, partly because the Sportatorium was unsuitable for hockey. It may have failed as a sports arena, but it thrived as a concert hall. Rob Williams endured about two dozen concerts in the smoke-filled, non-air-conditioned, asphalt-floored sweat box, and he kept going back for more. You know, it was good old dirty rock and roll, you know, the dirt, broken down place out in the middle of nowhere, and you can be loud as you want, and we didn't have to shut down at 11 p.m. because of noise ordinance, and uh, if, the, if the band wanted to come out for a third encore, they could. The Sportatorium was located right here at 17171 West Hollywood Boulevard at the time. Now it's Pines Boulevard, and this is a Sedano supermarket. We've got a sprawling housing development to the north. As a concert hall, it had a leaky metal roof, lousy acoustics, and the stage was right about here, appropriately enough. Despite that, it attracted all the biggest acts of the day, including Elvis Presley. People stood in line for hours to get tickets. It's a good thing they did. Six months later, he would be dead. The Sportatorium would die too. It closed in 1988 after the Sunrise Musical Theater and Miami Arena came along. It was torn down in 1993 to make way for more than a thousand homes and a shopping center in what was, by then, Pembroke Pines. Sensible, practical, but not nearly as cool. With another chapter in South Florida's dubious history, I'm Wayne Rooston for the Sun Sentinel.